In this unit, we're going to be studying three types of interest rates. First up, we'll be looking at simple interest. Next, we'll be looking at effective or compound interest. Now for each of these two rates, we'll be looking at how an investment accumulates, as well as how we can convert between them. Finally, we will very briefly introduce a third interest rate called the force of interest. OK, first up, let's take a look at simple interest. Now, simple interest is called simple because it does not earn interest on the interest. Now, one way to show this is via a quick example. So if we take £2,000 and invest it for three years at a simple rate of interest of 10% per annum, we're going to calculate the value of the investment after three years. Well, let's stick this in a table. In our first year, at the beginning of the year, we start with £2,000. Now, we've got an interest rate of 10% per annum. So 10% of 2,000, we will get an interest of 200 pounds. So at the end of year one, we will have altogether our original investment of 2,000 pounds plus our interest of 200, a total investment of 2,200. Okay, let's take a look at year two. Now year two, we still got our interest of 10% per annum, but remember, we don't earn interest on the interest. So we don't do 10% of the total investment, we still do 10% of the original £2,000. So once again, interest will be £200 and our total investment will now be £2,400. Same thing for the final year. Interest is not earned on interest, so the 10% is of the original £2,000. And so our final investment after three years is £2,600. OK, well, that was a little long-winded. So what would be nice is if we could get from our original investment of £2,000 to our final answer of 2,600 in one go. And we do that by using something called an accumulation factor. Now we use capital AN to stand for the accumulation factor over N years, i.e. what we multiply our original investment by to get our final investment after N years. Now in this case, the formula will be one plus NI because our final answer is the original 2,000 pounds plus N three years times our interest rate of 200 pounds. Just confirming that. 2000 times A3 is 2000 times one plus three years, 10%. And we get our 2,600 pounds. Okay, next up, let's look at effective or compound interest. Now, unlike simple interest, we will be earning interest on the interest. So let's look at the same investment as last time, but now with effective interest. £2,000 is invested for three years at an effective rate of interest of 10% per annum. Calculate the value of the investment after three years. Well, again, let's stick this in a table. So in year one, again, we start with £2,000. We do 10% interest, which is £200. So at the end of that year, we'll have a total investment of 2,200. Now this is where the difference is. We now earn the interest on everything, the original investment and the interest. So we now do in the second year, 10% of 2,200. So we get interest of 220. So that gives us a total investment at the end of the second year of 2,420. And in the third year, we'll now do 10% again of the total investment of 2,420, so we'll get 10% of that, 242 pounds, which gives us a final answer of 2,662 pounds. Once again, it would be good to get from our original investment of 2,000 pounds to our final answer of 2,662 pounds in one go. Again, we do that by using accumulation factor. Our accumulation factor for effective interest is one plus i to the n. Now, the reason for this is we can see in the first year, we've gone from 2000 to 2200, which is multiplying it by 1.1. And to get from 2200 to 2420, we've multiplied by 1.1 and so on. And the reason we're doing this is because we're getting the whole of the original investment, which is 100%, plus 10% interest on all of that investment. So 110%, 1.1. So just confirming that numerically for our example, we would have started with our investment of 2,000 pounds, 
times it by our accumulation factor for three years. So that would be 2000 times one plus I, which is 1.1 cubed. And that will give us our final answer of 2,662 pounds as we saw before. The diagram shows an investment of $100 over three years at 10%, with the lower line being simple interest and the upper line being compound or effective interest. We can see that as we increase the number of years, the difference between them becomes greater. And we can see very clearly that simple interest gives a linear growth in investment, whereas compound or effective interest gives us an exponential growth. Now we've looked at accumulating things under simple and effective interest, we're now going to look at a case where we convert between these interest rates. Here we're going to calculate the effective annual rate of interest equivalent to a simple rate of interest of 4% per annum over three years. Now the key to doing this is we simply equate the accumulation factors over the same time period. So here we have simple interest of 4% per annum for three years. So our accumulation factor, if you remember, was one plus n i. So in this case, we have n is three years and our interest rate is 4%. So this gives us an accumulation factor of 1.12. We now equate this to our accumulation factor for our effective interest rate. Recall that this was one plus i to the n. Now we want an effective annual rate of interest, so we're working in years. So we have one plus i cubed. Setting these equal, we see that we have one plus i cubed is 1.12. Now before we calculate the answer, it's always useful to have a feel for the numbers involved, so we can quickly spot if our answer is wrong. The question is, Will our compound or effective rate be bigger or smaller than a simple rate of 4% to give the same accumulation? If you said smaller, you're right, since effective interest earns interest on the interest. So we'll need a smaller rate to get the same accumulation. Well, let's see that happen. Cube rooting both sides, we get one plus i is equal to 1.12 cubed. So i is equal to 1.12 cubed minus one. This gives us 0.0385, that is 3.85% per annum. Let's look at one last example on converting between interest rates. Here we're going to swap from a simple rate of interest of 3% per annum for 91 days to an equivalent effective annual rate of interest. Once again, we write down the accumulation factor for our simple rate of interest. Since we've got an interest rate in years, let's work in years. So n is 91 days out of 365 to swap it into years, and our interest rate is 0.03. We're gonna stick this equal to the accumulation factor for the effective rate of interest. Again, we want an annual rate, so we need to work in years. So one plus i to the 91 over 365. Okay, on the left-hand side calculating that, we get 1.00 seven four seven nine four five and so on to undo a power of 91 over 365 we simply invert it so one plus i will equal the left hand side which was this to the power of 365 over 91 calculating this we get 1.030339 so we can see that our interest rate is 3.03% per annum. But hold on a second. We said that effective interest earns interest on the interest. So earlier we said we required a smaller effective rate of interest to get the same accumulation. But here we had a simple rate of interest of 3% per annum, but we have an effective rate of interest of 3.03% per annum. Why is this? If you said it's because of the time period, then you're correct. Earlier I showed you that with simple interest, the investment grows linearly, whereas with effective interest, it grows exponentially. Now actually the graphs cross over at time one. 
And so for investments over a longer period than one year, effective interest rate will give a larger accumulation. And so we need a smaller rate to get the same amount. But for less than one year, it's the other way round. A quick example can show this. So we can see here that for time periods less than a year, the investment under effective interest is smaller. Finally, in this unit, we'll just mention the third kind of interest, which is force of interest. Now, this is where interest is compounded continuously rather than annually. Denoting the force of interest by delta, we will show in a later unit that the accumulation factor over one year is e to the delta. Hence, if we wanted to obtain the equivalent effective annual interest rate, we'd equate this to the effective interest rate accumulation factor over one year, which is one plus i. And this is the formula that we need at this moment in time. So in summary, we have seen that for simple interest, the accumulation factor is one plus ni. For effective or compound interest, the accumulation factor is one plus i to the n. To convert between interest rates, we equate the accumulation factors over the same time period. And finally, we define the force of interest as e to the delta is one plus i.